So I'm Victor Favoretto, a third year PhD student uh, here, and uh, you guys are probably thinking by now, well, I heard that accent before, but I can't locate it. Well, actually, it's because I'm from Brazil. Actually, me and Mark, as I presented earlier, we grew 100 miles apart. So, and the fact of me being from Brazil might help me explain why I grew most exclusively with soybeans here in the middle of the corn belt. Uh, but today, I'm proud to present to you guys part of a PhD research entitled Is Sober Soybean Salvation? Well, before we start the presentation, I either want to convince you guys or refresh your minds uh, on why soybean needs sober. Well, our previous uh, crop physiology members published a paper there where uh, they say that soybean needs 17 pounds of sulfur to produce 60 bushels on grain yields there. And if Dr. Deers is watching it, uh, it's intuitively obvious that uh, to produce higher yields, we need more sulfur. And then, I don't know about you guys, but I think for Midwest, or at least Illinois, 60 bushels is already in the past. We are in the 70s right now. So we need more sulfur. And why do we need more sulfur? Well, uh, you guys know that the value for soybeans is a protein concentration in the grain, and that is where the sulfur plays a role is on that protein concentration. So with that being said, uh, we're going to go back to the presentation. So it is salvation, and we know that whenever salvation is needed, we need to have a needle for it. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to news for you guys, but this is the evil we are facing. In this graph, what we have is uh, 10 years of research, so since 2010 to 2021, all the more than 1,100 soil samples that our lab took, either in central Illinois or northern in Illinois, across the years. And uh, if we average the super level on those soils, we can see that across the years, we are decreasing the sulfur in the soil. And uh, I can use actually my PhD magic and put some values into it, and I can state that we are losing two, from two-thirds to three-quarters of a pound of sulfur per acre every year. And keep in mind, some of those areas, they have been fertilized on the, uh, or in, in those years. So in areas that sulfur is being overlooked, we are probably losing more sulfur than that. So with that being said, and uh, those three bullet points on uh, this need for sulfur for soybeans, it's safe to assume or to think that sulfur fertilizer application has the potential to increase yield. However, to accurately respond to that question that I posed in the beginning of the presentation of this sulfur soybean salvation, we need to look, or did we study, the two Gospels of sulfur on soybeans? And conveniently enough, those two Gospels are the two sets of trials I've done throughout my PhD. Now, Dr. Bill highlighted very good that Illinois is a long state and we do our research in three sites. And the reason for that is because, at least for soybeans, and I, I think the same applies for corn, is that we have three different uh, regions in Illinois. So, Northern Illinois, here in green, actually has the highest soil fertility across the state. Champaign is uh, the middle ground, so lower soil fertility than Yorkville, but higher soil fertility in southern Illinois, there in blue. And if we pair together with uh, weather data, we can see that Northern Illinois is a higher yield environment for soybeans. Central Illinois is the middle ground. And Southern Illinois would be the lowest yielding environment we have for soybeans here in the state. So, without further ado, uh, let's dive into the first gospel, which is sulfur applied at pre-plant. Well, with this study, what we test is uh, six different sources of sulfur, uh, and uh, we kind of created them to provide 20 pounds of sulfur. And we can see here that those sources provided extra nutrients with those sulfurs, and we didn't uh, balance the comparison uh, of the other nutrients because we were thinking like, gro like growers, right? If you choose a source of sulfur and that comes with an extra nutrient, you know, that's awesome. So, we have ammonium sulfate magnetization that stand. Polypor, uh, you guys probably um, cannot be familiar with it. It's a similar new sulfur source that comes now from Anglo-American, directly from England. It provides not only sulfur, but potassium, magnesium, and calcium there. 
We have the rental sofa, and what we did is it's Tiger 90, so we just went on Amazon and bought it, those little pellets there. And then we have Super Plus and K Man, and we did this research over three years. And my colleagues already highlighted the season, so I'm not going to dive into it. The 2018 was pretty perfect. We went in the late May. You can see beautiful sunset there. So we have beautiful weather throughout the growing season. 2019, uh, unfortunately, because of a wet spring, we were just on the fields in mid of June. And uh, we were planting, you can see here by the picture, it's a really airy conditions there. And we have some weather events, so we decreased the yield potential of that season compared to 2018. And then 2020, although we were able to plant earlier than 2019, we had uh, some uh, weather mishap. So we had the quarter size heavy wind chain crane and the direction storm going through the northern part of the state. So those two seasons have a lower yield potential when compared to 2018. So now let's dive into the core of this gospel, which uh, I'm going to present you by region. So we're going to be starting with uh, Northern Illinois. We have all the super sources or the fertilizers we use in this experiment here in the lab. And we have the no fertility control or the implant fertility. And we have the seasons here in the columns there. And we have the yield values, right? Uh, but I would put a lot of yield values in here, be a very crowded table. So I, I took the liberty to actually plot the response to sulfur. So, for example, here, ammonium sulfate in 2019 yielded whenever it was applied. So, I mean, with ammonium sulfate yielded three bushels more than the untreated control there. And to be more of a reader's digest version, what I did is I color coded it. So, whenever we have a positive yield response, the color will be green. And the first thing we can look uh, or see when we look at this table is that we have a lot of green in there. Uh, in, in fact, uh, that's something recurring. Recurrent, some recurrence we are having in our research when soybeans, contrary to corn, need fertility in higher yielding environments. So that's, you know, we have lots of sources that are responding positively, no negative responses for most all the sources in uh, northern Illinois, the highest yielding environment. And uh, one thing to highlight here is all those sources that have positive responses, they have two things in common. First thing is, but for elemental sulfur, all of them have uh, other nutrients with the sulfur play there. And uh, the second thing is, there are each one of those, in their own way, provides season-long provision, season-long sulfur to that soybean plant. And you guys might be thinking, well, why do you guys provide season-long fertility of sulfur? Well, Mr. Wisconish, it's a pleasure to meet you. You have a bright sun. And unfortunately, I don't have time to dive into this. But if we do have time, after a finishing presentation for questions, you can ask me that question of why they has for my long fertility of soap. Right? So, now let's move into the uh, other region. So, central Illinois. Uh, you know, it's hard to talk about here. We have way, way less, less green. And aside from my percentuals as thin, all the other sources didn't have an optimal or even a response uh, in soybean yields to their application. So the key takeaway from that, we were talking again about sulfur salvation, is that salvation actually is not for everyone. Right? So, but I don't want to finish the negative tone in this gospel, so let's move to southern Illinois. And we can see we have more green in central Illinois, but if we know this, we have more green in 2018 there, which was the perfect growing conditions throughout the state. So, again, we have more response to sulfur fertility when we have a higher yield environment to those soybeans. Even in a north, southern Illinois, which has a lower uh, soil fertility, with the weather helps, uh, your, your sulfur can bring you a very good response in you. Now, uh, we're Going to see quickly the second gospel of sulfur on soybeans, where we tested ammonium sulfate, and I've been told that this is the most common sulfur source here in Illinois. You know, my colleagues could have just been lying for, for me, but I trust them. And we tested it in different rates and two different times of application. So, what we did here 
we now instead of using 30 inch row spacing, we use a 20 inch row spacing. And the reason why we use this reduced row spacing is because we were trying to have a high yield environment for no soybean, so maximize response to sulfur. And we use three sulfur rates, so 15, 30, and 60 pounds of sulfur, that translates to 63, 125, and 220, or 250 pounds per acre of ammonium sulfate. And the two times we applied it was either broadcasted before planting, or whenever we started seeing uh, some pods in the top of the soybean plants, that's called the R3 growth stage in scientific uh, uh, language. We already went there and uh, top dressed all those three rates onto those soybeans. So here I present to you guys the core of the second gospel, where we have different regions where we performed this study. This, this study was started last year, so we don't we only have the uh, yield results from 2020, but we are replicating it this year. And below each uh, region, we have the sulfur applied, or the ANS applied, either at 20 or R3. And here we have the sulfur rates, which is a 60, or 83, uh, 125, and 250 pounds of ANS per acre. They also provide nitrogen. And whenever we are seeing a uh, through this color scheme, we can see that most of the green is actually on the planting side. So, providing ammonium sulfate at planting actually help you increase yields. The second thing we can take out of this is that if we look through the rates, we don't have that dose response we were hoping for. So, we can see that providing only 15 pounds of sulfur to your soybeans might be planting. And last thing, again, recurrent in our research, I'm just going to show this because otherwise, you guys would think I would be lying to you guys. Uh, in the northern region, our highest yielding site is the site that we have actually the best responses to sulfur fertility. So, with that, I again, uh, sorry for this, a gospel study, but I need to pose the question is sulfur soybean salvation? And the answer is yes. But as I learned from a couple of years ago, and on the hands of my one more, you need to look at the fine print on the contracts, so that answer is actually depending on the commandments of soybean or sulfur salvation. But what are those commandments? Well, here they are. So, so sulfur is needed actually, contrary to what you think, in a high yield environment to optimize all soybean yields. And uh, the, key, the key for sulfur fertility is actually the season long provision of sulfur. And if you have sulfur with other nutrients, especially nitrogen, that will be more, even more helpful because you have a more consistent response over the years. And in fact, you don't need more than 15 to 20 pounds of sulfur for higher soybean yields. Now, before I uh, open to questions, I have uh, quick announcements to do. Uh, we have our uh, website here. Uh, as Connor mentioned in Tour A, unfortunately we don't have time to put all the findings in there, but you guys are more than welcome to visit and see uh, the great information we have there. Or, once you guys are uh, on the internet, myself, I have a series of short videos in my LinkedIn and Twitter accounts called the Shots of Science, and I could swear I paid for a higher uh, advertising space in space there. That's what they gave me. Uh, so, where I interview not only, or I show not only my research, but I interview my peers and my colleagues from the crop physiology lab, so they also show their uh, research all over the season. We started that last year with COVID, and we are moving along to the second season of the Shots of Science. So, 